hello everybody today we have anita again here with us and uh, today we are going to ask some of the questions which are asked under anita's previous video and also some of the frequently asked questions uh, which comes under career development job switch and the salaries so yeah welcome anita thank you so the one of the question which was asked under your previous video was uh, what are the companies who hire people from a different streams like bsc or bca graduates so okay. yeah so many companies uh, on a bigger uh, scale right like tcs hcl mm -hmm. infosys mm -hmm. accenture mm -hmm. uh, are all hiring uh, other domain people mm -hmm. and uh, especially uh, for me i uh, mm -hmm. When I was in college, they've always arranged an off-campus for other domain people, mm -hmm. so that we can apply and then we can walk in. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes people from other domain uh, mm -hmm. might not be interested in computer science, right? So it's always a walk-in interview where you apply and uh, get enrolled. But uh, these days, in hiring that we are going, uh, we are also mentioning that other domain people can join. So uh, they are all walking in for the campus interview as well. Okay, so my second question being, how was the interview process? Because I'm from a computer science background, and in my case, they were asking questions like uh, some of the core algorithms which we have studied, or some of the things around linked list, reversing a linked list, or matrix multiplication. So, what are the questions which were asked for you? Yeah. For me, uh, I had basics of computer science and uh, programming, so I was being asked questions on C, C++, uh, data types, and then how do you use linked list, and uh, pointers, references, things related to that. And also some uh, logics like how do you uh, write a program for you know n factorial. Uh, something relevant on the problem solving as mm -hmm. well and some puzzles mm -hmm. but in the hirings uh, that we are going now uh, if they are from other domain uh, we mostly look for uh, problem solving attitude mm -hmm. so we just ask some questions and then we see how they solve the problem step by step and also if they are very clear on uh, approaching the problem that's more than enough okay so next come to the one of the important question what was your salary and how your salary incremented every year and what was your salary when you were leaving your first company or second company okay so um for me as i mentioned i uh, joined via uh, off campus and then my uh, initial salary was uh, 1 lakh 80000 per mm -hmm. uh, annum and i was working in tcs so every year i was getting um, uh, 5 to 8% uh, percent of hike and after around 4 years of uh, service there i just moved to another company so when i was leaving tcs my package was uh, 4 lakhs uh, mm -hmm. and 50000 per annum and in the second company i got uh, 90% hike so it came into uh, 8 lakhs 50000 per annum oh nice and then in my second company i've always been getting uh, somewhere around 12 to 15% of hike oh nice so this is about the salary and the next question is what are the core technologies you learned in these two companies and uh, if you have learned across multiple technologies um, uh, how was your experience so, okay yeah uh, for me uh, luckily in both of my uh, chennai companies right i uh, worked on r and d department uh, but i've always uh, in my uh, tcs company i started with android development so from that uh, I moved to uh, front end engineering, back end engineering. Then um, when I moved to uh, Pramati, I again applied for Android role because I felt much more confidence in Android since that was the starting technology for me. And uh, then even in Pramati, I have joined R and D team after one and a half years, and there I could uh, experiment or learn augmented reality, virtual reality and uh, some basics of 3D modeling with Maya and also collaborated with other teams for uh, AI concepts. Yeah. So, but basically you have more expertise on Android as you can say. Yes, because I have started with Android and whenever I have to apply for new roles, I feel much more confident to give interviews for uh, Android development because I feel like I'm almost in touch with Android for 10 years plus and uh, I'm strong in basics. So even if they uh, uh, give a lot of updates in between if I was working on other technology as well. When I come back, it was easy to grasp and then understand what they have done in the new release. So I'm much more uh, inclined towards Android even now. 
So, what are the technologies uh, which people are looking in the Android developer in recent days? What are the new understanding? What are the libraries they should be knowing if they are applying for an Android developer role? Yeah, uh, I would say top trending uh, concepts on Android would be uh, dependency injection uh, and uh, anything that is related to reactive programming, right? Uh, Rx Java, Rx Kotlin, and especially with Kotlin. Uh, if you are also around uh, 10 years uh, experience in Android, how Java was it and then slowly Kotlin was moving. But now when we talk to anybody on Android development, it's just Kotlin uh, that is there and then mostly the legacy part exists in Java. Uh, and then I would also recommend to have uh, uh, knowledge on uh, all the Jetpack libraries uh, because that is also being uh, very much used and uh, retrofit for the network call. Okay, so this is about the technologies. Now, thanks a lot. Uh, we also, I also wanted to know, like, uh, what do you feel that uh, how your profile got uh, shortlisted when you were applying for a company in Germany? What all the additional things you had done, which helped you in getting your profile got shortlisted? Uh, for my profile, uh, uh, I again applied for Android engineering here. And then um, also I had to mention all the uh, projects that I have done on Android, uh, especially in Germany, they also look for some uh, pet projects. Uh, not only that uh, we work for some uh, clients or uh, you know some product based company, if you are highly motivated they believe they will be uh, you know uh, people will have some uh, pet projects and also some libraries uh, hosted in GitHub or something. So that extra uh, hobby oriented pet projects would be much more helpful. I also had one mm -hmm. and also the concepts which I have worked on is much uh, wider. Even on Android, it's all, even um, I worked on um, augmented reality on Android. So which uh, shows that in some area I have deeper insights about the techniques. So I feel that is much more uh, helpful in my profile. Okay, so basically uh, knowing something additional or kind of doing additional out of your uh, boundaries or out of your company work, it will be helpful. That is what you're trying to say. So I also want to tell that if you get a call from any uh, international companies, be the first one to apply. Don't think like, okay, my resume is not ready. So it's not like that. Be the first one. As soon as you, you be prepared and at the point you see any companies which are very suitable for your profile, just apply it and uh, this is one of the important thing and also when they when usually big big companies they have their own set of interview processes but there are some companies maybe they are startups or a small mid-scale companies they usually ask for uh, uh, questions like they might give you an assign assignment or take home project so try to finish it as soon as possible if you have taken the responsibility try to finish it as soon as possible because that is also indication of how interested you are in that company if you take if you take the assignment take one week two weeks then yeah it will delay your uh, chances of getting hired so thanks a lot anita for coming here and uh, presenting it today the reason why i chose anita as because she's really an inspiration she is from a math background she moved into it development she's not only doing moved into it development she learned all the core concepts in the it development she's nothing less than a computer engineer now she is all equal to a computer science graduate right now because she knows most of the things so it is not impossible for anybody to move from a different background to the field which they like so this is one of the thing which I wanted to ask and that is why I chose Anita. Anita, um, do you have any tips for upcoming Android developers or any kind of software engineers? First of all, I have to thank you for the very kind words. It was so positive and then motivating for me as well. In terms of tips or something, uh, I think uh, keeping track with the updates itself is the biggest thing, which is also very much challenging uh, because we would be working on some concept and also sometimes a lot of migration uh, code from Java to Kotlin or anything of that sort. But also we have to keep a track of latest updates, right? which has to go in parallel irrespective of the projects we work. I think uh, that is one thing I would recommend. So this is it for today's video. See ya in next video soon. Please subscribe to my channel and if you have any kind of questions, please comment it down and try to cover it in my next video. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.